let me finish with uh, whatever I started today. So we were there on the slide that talks about antibiotic treatment. And I s said that if you uh, use an antibiotic that can basically change the existing population of bacteria. And uh, what may happen is that you have a given set of bacteria which are present and then they are in harmony with your immune system and all of a sudden you change that equilibrium and what may happen is that uh, you may end up proliferating some of the antibiotic resistant organisms such as Enterococcus, Pseudomonas and fungi and uh, many a times we see Clostridium difficile can also grow rapidly in this situation and this will lead to a disease that we call a pseudomembranous colitis and that will result a uncontrolled diarrhea and then uh, is of course we have to stop the antibiotic and then treat the infection as well so the whole idea is that uh, you have to be careful uh, before you institute an antibiotic therapy because you do not want to disrupt the colonic flora and produce another significant intestinal disease and you may have noticed many a time people use antibiotics and they get diarrhea so that's pretty much is coming from that idea that uh, you change the normal configuration or commensal population of bacteria the other important thing that we talked earlier was uh, commensal population in urogenital tract and the most important in that case is basically vaginal microbial flora because the microbial population which is in the vagina is pretty much diverse and not only diverse but the other important thing and usually a question asked in the exam as well this is a epithelium or a mucous membrane that has a dramatic influence by the change in hormonal status of females just to give an example uh, when new girl newborn girls are born their vaginal normal flora is mostly lactobacilli at birth and these bacteria would predominate for approximately six weeks and uh, after that time when the levels of maternal estrogen have declined and then uh, the baby weans off from that effect and this time now the vaginal flora changes and now it includes staphylococci, streptococci and enterobacteriaceae. So these are some of the bacteria that will uh, take over. The other thing that to remember is since this epithelium has a sensitivity to estrogen and when again estrogen kicks in as is initiated at puberty like menage and you will again see microbial changes in vaginal normal flora and this time again lactobacilli will re-emerge as the predominant organisms and likewise there may be many other organisms like staph aureus and less commonly coagulase negative species which basically are the normal flora of the skin and then septococci includes group B septococci, enterococcus, gardenerella, mycoplasma and ureaplasma and there is a variety of anaerobic bacteria so what you need to remember again is that some places especially vaginal normal flora where there is a balance of bacteria and if you want to change that balance and especially it's already being changed by hormonal status you may end up having a problem and as I said earlier uh, most of the time we do see uh, vaginitis as in ba bacterial vaginosis as one of the common uh, female problems that we see in clinics now uh, Neisseria gonorrhea remains as one of the common causes of vaginitis that we see clinically. Uh, in the absence of this particular or organism, there are a significant number of cases that basically would develop when that precise 
balance of vegetal, vaginal so-called normal flora is disturbed and that would increase uh, whether rather it will result in decreasing in the number of lactobacilli which in this case are protective and that will increase the number of other bacteria like Mobinuncus and Cardinera and Trichomonas vaginalis and C. albicans and, and C. glabrata and many other important bacteria that we see as uh, one of the important causes of vaginitis. Now also keep in mind that most of the time we say normal bacteria flora, it doesn't mean that bacteria is only the normal flora of organs like vagina and organs like uh, other oral mucosa and organs like you know, anal canal and so on and so forth. But the fact is that some of the viruses like herpes simplex virus and maybe papilloma virus uh, are not considered and would not be considered as a normal flora of genital uterine tract. So if you do find herpes simplex virus or you do find a human papilloma virus that is considered as abnormal and that may lead to some of the infections that we see especially in chronic vaginitis and it's difficult to treat because the infection keeps on recurring over and over again and that is cause of persistent infections. Now, as we discussed earlier, if you look at the anatomy, cervix is not normally colonized with bacteria, so we have a tight cervix. So we have anterior fornix, posterior fornix of vagina, but then again, a cervix is protected. But if you do see inflammation of the cervix, which is the head of uterus, especially bulging into upper vault, and you can isolate Neisseria gonorrhea or Chlamydia trachomatis, that may be one of the important causes of cervicitis. And then finally, actinomyces can also produce disease at this site. Coming back to skin, again the major organ, and that comes in contact with exterior, so pretty much our skin is covered by gram-positive bacteria and skin actually faces a very hostile environment and which should not support most of the organisms but we do see uh, gram-positive bacteria uh, notably coagulase negative staphylococcus and less commonly staph aureus or corine bacteria or even propiani bacteria propiani bacteria is basically the causative agent for acne and then again you don't want to have an acne so of course you don't want propionia, propiani bacteria to be there on your skin. Then uh, Clostridium perfringens is also located on the skin approximately 20% of healthy individuals. So keep in mind that there are percentages, there are incidences, there are prevalent values of some of the bacteria and also very commonly, you know, athlete's foot, gel fungal infection, fungi, especially candida and melasesia, are found on those parts of the skin that pretty much are considered as moist areas. Now, streptococci, and we'll discuss that in detail, uh, can colonize the skin for a short time, but the volatile fatty acids produced by an anaerobe on the skin, propiani bacteria, are toxic for these organisms. So it's like a little bit of competitive inhibition taking place. So you don't want your skin to be colonized with streptococci and there are anaerobes, propiani bacteria, and that's what the causative agent for acne. So they kind of fight with each other and would not let streptococci to even colonize the skin for a short period of time. As far as gram-negative rods are concerned, they do not permanently colonize the skin surface. The only exception that we may have is <coughs> Acinotobacter and few other less common genera because for them, uh, skin is too dry. And lastly, uh, let me go through, run through some of the facts that we have discussed so far. And these are like key points and I would want you, encourage you to understand that and uh, keep in mind that uh, when we say normal flora 
most of the time we mean bacterial flora but doesn't exclude any viruses or fungi or parasites. So you may have a normal flora for a short or extended period of time. If pathogens are involved, of course the relationship uh, is called carrier state. So if you carry a pathogen as a normal flora without you getting a disease yourself, you are carrying that bacteria and the, you may pass it on to other people. So the whole idea is that there's a balance which is this, uh, desired and then of course as we discussed earlier initial flora is acquired during and immediately after birth there are some innate immune factors that like for example physiological condition as your pH of the skin, pH of vagina, pH of uh, stomach, pH of mouth so and so forth that may determine as to what bacteria will find a safe home at those places so that's pretty much important. These area basically have to adhere to those particular openings in human body. So they have to counteract mechanical flushing. For example, if they have to stand by the urethra, they have to stick to the urethra and then pretty much uh, would not be flushed out by urine. Also, they need to compete for the nutrients as an advantage. So they need to pick up their food from that area and the tissues and body fluids such as blood are still healthy. We talked about that. If you get a trauma, you may get uh, bacteria in your blood called bacteremia. And then uh, propiani bacteria and staphylococci are dominant bacteria, especially when we talk of skin. Uh, skin is a big organ. No matter what you do, how many showers you take, how many things you do, but you pretty much have a very resistant and uh, sticky kind of a skin flora that would basically stick with you. And then you can uh, look at your conjunctiva of the skin, pretty much resembles skin. Oropharynx mouth has streptococci and Neisseria. As we discussed earlier, stomach and small bowel have a few residents. And of course, residents over there have to be acid tolerant. And uh, intestinal flora is scanty because that's where absorption takes place, but can happen. And uh, it kind of increases as we move uh, from jejunum to lower ilium and of course then when you come to adult uh, col colon it is nothing but bacteria so they pretty much are anaerobic because there's no oxygen there and then again uh, the diet that you eat will change the composition of this bacteria uh, bifidobacteria are predominant for our breastfed infants that's been noticed whereas uh, Bartle fat infants have a flora similar to weaned infants. So that's again a discussion point uh, about the breast fat and bottle fat. Some people carry staph aureus in their anterior nares, very, si very common site of uh, infection, loyal. And then uh, nasopharynx is often a site of carriage for other potential pathogens. Uh, Lower tract basically has uh, mucillary actions, so these kind of cilia happening on those epithelial cells that approach the mucus out and would not let bacteria to stick. As we discussed earlier, uh, bladder and upper urinary tract are sterile. Uh, hormonal changes affect the vaginal flora, and then again, lactobacilli making it uh, quite a negative pH would not allow any other organisms to come and uh, I mean low pH to come over there to uh, become a common uh, commensal. So epithelial glycogen, that again uh, is of course uh, used by lactobacilli and they produce low bacilli. And some of the flora which basically exist over there is protective but if it reaches some sites uh, like for example, vaginal flora, if it's flushed up into cervix, especially uh, for those women who use douching and they want to spray water up to cleanse uh, vaginal canal or clean themselves up, they may push some of the bacteria right up into the cervix and right up into their uh, uteruses. So that may cause some problems. Otherwise, uh, on the other end, in mouth flora, you may have some of the bacteria that may reach your heart valves and cause 
transient transient bacteremia. And finally, uh, these are some of the additional questions that I would want you to know. For example, what is a career, a person with an asymptomatic infection or who has recovered from an infection but continues to carry the organism and may shed it, like for example, a typhoid carrier, like S. aureus carrier. So you carry, don't get a disease. We already discussed what occurs in colonization. You can be acquired and replicate a new organism, but it's not a part of your normal flora. And it may cause infection or may be your host defenses can eliminate that. So the other question is what is the predominant organism of the skin and when can it become pathogenic, dangerous? So as epidermidis, epidermidis basically means skin, it can be pathogenic when it plants on devices such as artificial heart valves and prosthetic joints. What is yeast and uh, which is a normal flora of the skin? Can it cause systemic infection, especially if you have reduced cell mediated immunity? Yes, of course it can, especially Canada. Uh, what is the cause, common cause of an anaerobe, especially for pathogenesis of acne, as we discussed earlier, propionic bacterium? What do the anaerobic bacteria of the GI tract, such as Clostridium, Bacteroides, commonly cause if aspirated? So you can have a vomit and then vomit goes into your uh, respiratory tract and you can aspire that, that will cause lung disease. Where in the body does S. aureus colonize? As we discussed earlier, nose, especially the anterior part of the nose. What are the, some normal flora of intestinal tract which are pathogenic? E. coli causes urinary tract infection, bacteroides fragilis causing peritonitis, enterococcus fecalis causing UTI endocarditis, and pseudomonas aeruginis, aeruginos. Now, we can also ask a question, for example, when a patient is treated with clindamycin or other broad spectrum antibiotics, what organism commonly overgoes the colon, sometimes leading to pseudomembranous colitis? And this is we discussed earlier as well. You change the ratio between good and bad, you end up having overgrowth of Clostridium difficile, leading to pseudomembranous colitis. What is the predominant bacterial species in normal vaginal flora of adult women? Overgrown by what common fungus is suppressed by this normal flora? So basically, as we discussed earlier, lactobacillus species are there and they are protective and they basically prevent the overgrowth of Candida albicans. So if you disturb that balance, many a time females may have a Candida vaginitis or candida discharge or candidiasis and that of course will be very difficult to treat so lactobacillus are protective what is the predominant organism of the urethra it's again pretty much the one in the skin and this is as epidermidis so there are quite a few questions that you can see we can ask and they are based upon the facts and what I would want you to uh, to review all this over and over again, discuss and talk to your colleagues. And then um, I think that pretty much will cover and complete today's lecture so I don't have to spend extra time and we can go ahead and start the next chapter tomorrow.